Because what I, what I want to do, Mr. President, uh, stand there for a second, because I want to introduce you to Nina Gonzalez, who uh, brought up a question that we hear a lot, uh, both over the Internet and from this crowd. President Obama, during the Democratic National Convention in 2008, you stated you wanted to keep AK-47s out of the hands of criminals. What has your administration done or plan to do to limit the availability of assault weapons? You know, we're a nation that believes in the Second Amendment, and I believe in the Second Amendment. You know, we've got a long tradition of hunting and sportsmen, uh, and people who want to make sure they can protect themselves. But there have been too many instances during the course of my presidency where I've had to comfort families who've lost somebody, most recently out in Aurora. You know, just uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, actually probably about a month, uh, I saw a mother who I had met at the bedside of her son who had been shot in that theater and her son had been shot through the head and we spent some time and we said a prayer and remarkably about two months later this young man and his mom showed up and he looked unbelievable good as new but there were a lot of families who didn't have that good fortune and whose sons or daughters or husbands didn't survive so my belief is that, A, we have to enforce the laws we've already got, make sure that we're keeping guns out of the hands of criminals, those who are mentally ill. We've done a much better job in terms of background checks, but we've got more to do when it comes to enforcement. But I also share your belief that weapons that were designed for soldiers in war theaters don't belong on our streets. And so what I'm trying to do is to get a broader conversation about how do we reduce the violence generally. Part of it is seeing if we can get an assault weapons ban reintroduced, but part of it is also looking at other sources of the violence. Because frankly, in my hometown of Chicago, there's an awful lot of violence, and they're not using AK-47s, they're using cheap handguns. And so what can we do to intervene to make sure that young people have opportunity? that our schools are working, that if there's violence on the streets, that working with faith groups and law enforcement, we can catch it before it gets out of control. And so what I want is a, is a comprehensive strategy. Part of it is seeing if we can get automatic weapons that kill folks in amazing numbers out of the hands of criminals and the mentally ill. But part of it is also going deeper and seeing if we can get into these communities and making sure we catch violent impulses before they occur. Governor Romney, the question is about assault weapons, AK-47s. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of new pieces of legislation on, on guns and, and taking guns away or, or making certain guns illegal. We, of course, don't want to have automatic weapons, and that's already illegal in this country to have automatic weapons. W what I believe is we have to do, as the president mentioned uh, towards the end of his remarks there, which is to make e enormous efforts to enforce the gun laws that we have and to change the culture of violence we have. And you ask, how are we going to do that? And there are a number of things. He mentioned good schools. I totally agree. We were able to drive our schools to be number one in the nation in my state. And I believe if we do a better job in education, we'll, we'll give people the, the hope and opportunity they deserve and perhaps less violence from that. But let me mention another thing, and that is parents. We need moms and dads helping raise kids wherever possible, the, the benefit of having two parents in the home. And that's not always possible. A lot of great single moms, single dads. But gosh, to tell our kids that before they have babies, they ought to think about getting married to someone, that's a great idea. Because if there's a two-parent family, the prospect of living in poverty goes down dramatically. The opportunities that the child will, will be able to achieve increase dramatically. So we, we can make changes in the way our, our culture works to help bring people away from violence and give them opportunity and bring them in the American system. The, the, the greatest failure we've had with regards to, to gun violence in some respects is what what is known as Fast and Furious, which was a program uh, under this administration and how it worked exactly, I think we don't know precisely, but where thousands of automatic and, and AK-47 type weapons were, were given to people that ultimately gave them to, to drug lords 
they used those weapons against uh, against their own citizens and killed Americans with them. And this was a this was a program of the government. For what purpose it was put in place, I can't imagine. But it's one of the great tragedies related to violence in our society, which has occurred during this administration, which I think the American people would like to understand fully. It's been investigated to a degree, but but the administration has uh, has, uh, has carried out executive privilege to, to prevent all the information from coming out. I'd like to understand who it was that did this, what the idea was behind it, why it led to the violence, thousands of guns going to Mexican yeah. drug Governor. lords. Governor, if I could, the, the question was about these assault weapons that once were banned and are no longer banned. Uh, I, I know that you signed an a, a assault weapons ban when you were in Massachusetts. Obviously, with this question, you, you no longer do support that. Why is that, given the kind of violence that we see sometimes with these mass killings? Uh, why is that that you've changed your mind? Well, Candy, actually, in, in my state, the pro-gun folks and the anti-gun folks came together and put together a piece of legislation. And, and it's referred to as, a, as the, an assault weapon ban, but it had, at the signing of the bill, both the pro-gun and the anti-gun people came together because it provided opportunities for both that both wanted. There were hunting opportunities, for instance, that hadn't previously been available and so forth. So it was a mutually agreed upon piece of legislation. That's what we need more of, Candy. What we have right now in Washington is a place that's, uh, that's gridlocked. So if I we could, if you had, could get people to agree to it, you'd we be for had, it. We haven't, had the, we haven't had the leadership in Washington to work on a bipartisan basis. I was able to do that in my state and bring these two together. Quickly, Kenny, Mr. President. The, uh, uh, first of all, I think Governor Romney was for an assault weapons ban before he was against it. And he said that the reason he changed his mind was in part because he was seeking the endorsement of the National Rifle Association. So... That's on the record. But I think that one area we agree on is the importance of parents and the importance of schools. Because I do believe that if our young people have opportunity, then they're less likely to engage in these kinds of violent acts. We're not going to eliminate everybody who is mentally disturbed, and we've got to make sure that they don't get weapons. But we can make a difference in terms of ensuring that every young person in America, regardless of where they come from, what they look like, have a chance to succeed. And Candy, we haven't had a chance to talk about education much, but I think it is very important to understand that the reforms we've put in place, working with 46 governors around the country, are seeing schools that are some of the ones that are the toughest for kids starting to succeed. We're starting to see gains in math and science. When it comes to community colleges, we are setting up yeah, right. uh, programs including with Nassau Community College, to retrain workers, including young people who may have dropped out of school but now are getting another chance, training them for the jobs that exist right now. And in fact, employers are looking for skilled workers, and so we're matching them up, giving them access to higher education. As I said, we have made sure that millions of young people are able to get an education that they weren't able to get before. Now, Mr. President, uh, but, I, have to, I have to move you along here. But, you but, said you wanted to hear these I, questions, it'll, it'll, so we need it'll, to it'll do it just, here. Just one second, one because, because this is important. This is part of the choice in this election. And when Governor Romney was asked whether teachers, hiring more teachers, was important to growing our economy, Governor Romney said, that doesn't grow our economy. The, qu the when, question, when was of course, asked, Mr. Is, President, was, was guns here, so I, I need to move us along. You know, the question was guns, so let me let but me. This will make a difference in, another... in terms of whether or not we can move this economy forward for these young people. I understand. And reduce our violence. Okay, thank you so much. I, I want to ask Carol Goldberg to stand up because she gets to a question that both these men have been passionate about. It's for Governor Romney. The outsourcing of American jobs overseas has taken a toll on our economy. What plans do you have to put back and keep jobs here in the United States?